Very pretty. Okay, now. Uh, now, let's f we're finally starting. We're going to talk about entropy. Let me show you a example of entropy. Now, here I have some paper. Nice and neat. See that? Nice and neat. Can you see that in the camera? Nice and neat. Okay. Very nice and neatly. Okay. And I'm going to use very little energy. You ready? Very little energy. Just a flick of the hand, right? I'm going to get right on up. Okay. So, so what, what happened? Did, did the papers become more organized or less organized? Less, less organized. It became less organized. Now, now, I'm not going to because I don't want to waste film, but it would take me a good five to ten minutes to pick those up, especially with my old back and put them together in a nice neat stack. So look at the amount of energy it would take for me to reverse the process. It would take me, A, a lot of time, but B, a lot of energy to pick up that paper and make it nice and neat. Okay? I am a perfect example of entropy. As you get older, you don't become more pretty. <laughs> you become quite ugly, okay? In a handsome sort of way, I suppose. But you age. You don't become younger looking. You become older looking. You're, you're, you fall apart. You literally fall apart. Age, the golden years, fool's gold, yellow paint, okay? If I have a house on a hill in the middle of a field and I don't do anything to it, I just build it and I leave it there, in a hundred years it's going to turn to dust, maybe less than a hundred years. Carnot's efficiency. We talked about this equation. Carnot's efficiency. Look up Carnot, and let's, let's tell the listening audience, I love cell phones in class. Look up Carnot, C-A-R-N-O-T, and, and we'll talk briefly about who that is, okay? Now, while you're doing that, let me do something else first. <clears throat> the, first the first law states that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It can, it can change form. Uh, you can trace energy from, uh, from gasoline or coal or nuclear to electricity coming out of the walls. You can trace it, uh, and it, tr it can transform. But it has to be accounted for. There ha there's an accounting procedure that takes place. I got it. Okay? Nico Nikolai, uh, Leonardo. Nikolai Leonard Sadi Carme. He was a military engineer and physicist. He was a military engineer and physicist. Give me the phone. Okay. Let's see. It says, just very briefly, uh, Nikolai Leonard Sadi Carno, born 1796, died 1832. Very young man. French military engineer and physicist, often described as the father of thermodynamics. So if you want to complain, he's the man to go to. And it says, in his only publication in 1824, monograph, Reflections on the Motive Power of Fire, Carnot gave the first successful theory of the maximum efficiency of heat engines. Isn't that amazing? Carnot's work attracted little attention during his lifetime, but it was later used by Rudolf Clausius and Lord Kelvin to formalize the second law of thermodynamics and define the concept of entropy. Thank you very much, Zach. Excellent. Zach is a wonderful student. 
Uh, he's a little nutty, but that's okay. We like nutty. Okay. Now, so let me, let me just read from the book. I, I do that because I want you to have your textbook out and kind of like look at it. You know, instead of, I know it's amazing, isn't it? We'll talk about it later. Um, instead of using the book as a paperweight, it, it might be nice to actually read it carefully and see if, I know, I know, I know. They're looking at a holography uh, of, a, of a pig and uh, a concave mirror. But don't mess with it. Don't open it up. Don't mess with it because it'll get scratched very easily. Now, it says, it says, um, the second law of thermodynamics, the second law of thermodynamics states that heat will never of itself flow from cold object to a hot object. We've established that, correct? We've also said, according to the second law of thermodynamics, no heat engine can convert all heat, all heat input to mechanical energy output. We also said that, we also said that natural systems tend to proceed towards great, greater disorder. It says the first law of thermodynamics, I'm at the top of page 479, the first law of thermodynamics states that energy can me neither be created nor destroyed. The second law adds that whenever energy transforms, some of it degenerates. Isn't it, don't you like that? Some of it degenerates into waste heat, unavailable to do work. Another way to say this is that organized, usable energy degenerates into disorganized, non-usable energy. Don't you like that? I kind of like that. The energy of gasoline is in an organized, usable form. When gasoline burns in an automobile engine, part of, it, part of its energy does useful work, such as moving pistons, moving a car, but part of the energy is heat, and it heats the surroundings. And part of the energy goes out as exhaust. Useful energy degenerates to non-useful forms of energy and is unavailable for doing the same amount of work. So you can think of ener entropy like this, that it is a degenerated form of energy that is non-usable. Now, Entropy naturally is positive. It's positive for natural processes. If I have, if I drop, if I drop that paper, oh, maybe once out of a hundred billion times it will fall and it will become more organized. Or maybe, maybe a wind sweeps through a room and makes your room, your bedroom cleaner. Maybe. Could happen. Maybe the molecules in a little corner of your room all of a sudden line up very neatly and organized for a moment. Could be. But in terms of the sum of all things, the sum of all things, I will tell you that two things happen. The natural process is that entropy will increase. That's the natural order of things. Entropy is positive. And I'll also tell you this. There's another natural process. That, that things, that, that heat will flow from high to low energy. Well, what does that mean? In other words, things are exothermic. Exothermic is natural. So in other words, in other words, this is the second law, right? That's the second law. But you can also look at it like this. Let me show you. It says, it says, it says, the second law of thermodynamics states that heat will never flow of itself from cold object to hot object. It will always flow from hot to cold. In other words, it will be like this. Enthalpy, heat, internal energy. It always flows from hot to cold. So that's normal. These are, let me erase some of this. Is that okay? The second law, I mean, you could, 
I'm kind of clouding the issue relative to chemistry and physics a little bit, okay? But you can always say that that's true as a natural process, and that's true for a natural process. Heat flows from high energy to low energy, so it would be final minus initial, right? Right? Lana's looking at me like, what is he talking about? If, Lana, if heat flows from high to low, and I say final minus initial, wouldn't the final be a lower energy than the initial? Yes. Because it's flowing out, right? So final minus initial would be Final minus initial, so it would be like this. This is final, this is initial. So final minus initial will be, will be negative, correct? So the change in entropy will be negative. Then change in enthalpy will be negative, correct? Where is if I, if I do this, if I say this is going to go like this, this is final, minus initial, so that'll be plus. That'll be plus. Okay? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it like that, but I, I just direct you to looking at the book, especially where it says, especially where it says this, it says, organized energy in the form of electricity that goes into electric lights in homes and office buildings degenerates to heat energy. Now, why is this a good thing? You know, you can use this whole idea of entropy to your favor. You know why? Because, let's say a, an electric incandescent light bulb gets really hot, right? Okay, so it's 5% efficient as a light source, right? but it's 95% efficient as a heat source. So, I, what do I do? I use that as a heat source. Why do you need a heat source? When is heat not waste energy? When it improves the human condition. You walk in here in the morning and it's cold. Uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah. We need to produce some waste heat, don't we? To improve the human condition. So all of a sudden, that waste energy, that waste heat, can be utilized to something beneficial. You have a thermostat in your car that helps your environmental controls. It, it helps to heat the inside of your car, and it gets that heat from where? From the engine, correct? It's redirecting it through. It's called a thermostat. Let me just read this one paragraph. I if you would indulge me just for a second. The Trans-America Pyramid in uh, San Francisco, it's a beautiful structure. If, you've ever, if you ever walk across the Golden Gate Bridge, it's gorgeous, it's a, just a gorgeous structure. It says, just gonna read it, and this will be, conclude this. You ready? Organized energy in the form of electricity that goes into electric lights in homes and office buildings degenerates into heat energy. This is a principal source of heating in many office buildings in moderate climates, such as the Trans-America Pyramid in San Francisco. All of the electrical energy in the lamps, even the part that briefly exists in the form of light, turns into heat energy, which is used to warm the buildings. That explains why the lights are on most of the time. This energy is degenerated and has no further use. But it, doesn't, it, it has a further use not to do work, but to improve the human condition. We need help with temperature. You know, we wear clothes to help our body regulate temperature. We can't live in zero degree weather. We don't have fur. We're not a wolf or a bear. You, you know, we, okay, I, they, they call me a bear, but I don't really look like a bear. They just call me that. 
But so we need this waste heat. You know, you burn wood in a fireplace. A lot of entropy there, right? A lot of entropy there. You're, you're starting, can I erase this? Might have I erased this? Let's look at the entropy in burning wood. You take this nice, organized piece of wood, beautifully constructed. One of the great mysteries of nature. Beautiful, organized. Glucose bonds, cellul cellula um, cellulose, okay? Beautiful, 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 beautiful structure. And I mix that with oxygen, and I produce carbon dioxide plus water. At best, I produce a lot of other stuff. How do you know you produce something other than carbon dioxide and water? Because it's not perfectly blue. It's, you see the, the, the yeah, color of the flame right. is all the na nasty byproducts. But what you're doing is you're taking this nice organized structure and making this incredibly disorganized structure. And what are we doing? We have a reduction of heat, right? It's losing its energy, which is a good thing, right? So energy is flowing this way from high energy to low energy, from high to low energy, right? Yes? Yes, 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 and then also the entropy. This is this is low entropy, high entropy. Why is that high entropy? So I write that again. It's destroying the wood. All right, you ready? Okay, so you have wood. Nice organized wood plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide plus water plus ga other gases, right? And this has, this has, this has high energy, it has low Entropy. This has this has low energy and high entropy. How do you know it has low energy? How do you know? How do you, how do you know that this side has low energy? How do you know? Because the energy was given off as fire. The energy is the waste heat. I produced all of these molecules over here, but I also gave off the heat. So you go like this. The entropy in time went like this. This is the products. Those are the reactants. So the entropy of the products this is the, sorry, these are the reactants, these are the products. So the entropy of the products minus the entropy of the reactants is going to be negative. The enthalpy, right? So, okay, understood. So that's all I want to say. This, is, this summarizes it right here. I have this high energy, fuel, gasoline, whatever the case may be. It gives off all of this waste heat. The, the energy flows from high energy to low energy, from low entropy to high entropy. So this is Newton's second law right here. The second law of thermodynamics, not Newton's second law of thermodynamics, the second law of thermodynamics as created by Kelvin. Yes? A little confusing. Hang with it. Okay, good.